Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brandon Roberts. Um, thank you for joining our Decisions Lunch and Learn. Today's Thursday, uh, August 6th. I'm Brandon, one of the support managers, and I will be um, just answering questions today. Um, we'll wait for a few people to get in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. There were no pre-submitted questions today. It looks like Wade has a question. Uh, if you want to come off mute, Wade. Yeah. Uh, so whenever I am, so I'm setting a variable at the beginning of my flow. Mm -hmm. And then I have an action, let's see, a, uh, trying to get the name of it. A set object data step. So I'm like trying to set a value. Mm -hmm. um, it, like every time I use one of those, I get an error saying, I mean, it still works, but I get an error saying that it's the wrong data type because it's like data type of object instead of, you know, it, it, it's a string, um, but it's, I'm getting, oh, it's an inca incompatible data types because you're putting it as uh, type object, but it's type string. And mm -hmm. Wait, when you go to advanced, it says uh, in, in that thing, you can hit, it's automatically checked as any type, I'm assuming is why it put it as object. And then you can name a specific data type that you wanna cast that object as. And for single records, it works. Like if it's a single string, I can cast it as a string and it works and the error goes away. But if it's a string list, then I don't know a way to fix that. So there, I got a bunch of those errors all over my flow because I can't do that. <laughs> okay, so we're doing like a, it's a cast object to... Um, no, I'm just doing like a set, set value. I'm trying to remember what it is. Set... Uh, uh, yeah, let me share my screen. We can take a look at it together. Not set state, set value. I'm doing set value. Okay. Um, is everyone able to see my uh, decision screen? I am, yeah. Okay. You said set value? So, so I start off with a uh, create data, and I'm creating a string list. Okay. Okay, so we have a create data step. Let's say string list. And then I'm using the set value to update that later on in the flow. Like the this change value option here? No, the act the actual step. Uh, set I, think, I, think, I think it does it to that too, the, the output value. Ah, uh, this one set value. Uh, there's a, yeah, I think there, mine looks different than yours. Mine doesn't, they set value data. Mine just says set value. They're different. Uh, I, just, I just hit, I just typed in set and then that came up. And it's all the way at the bottom. Yeah, uh, this one. I don't know if it's different, but that's the, Ah, okay, so this is using uh, this is like a set a value for an Excel. No, 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 no. That's I think it might that one. No, I don't. I don't know what I clicked. The actual step information name is uh, set object data step. Is in in the. Oh, okay. so that must that must be it. Okay, sorry. Are you fine? Okay, so set value. Okay. Yeah, and see how it says object system. Like, I don't know if that's what deal with but yeah so I, I go in I select my string mm -hmm. and then I just change it to you know have some oh. list okay then we could let's, let's just do this uh, do string list one and string list two Mm 
Let's do one, two, three, and A, B, C. First, let's set the stringless one. Okay. I think this is fine. I think it's just particularly it's expecting an object type. I think this validation is fine. Do you get any errors when you actually run this step? Yeah. So in, in my bottom left where it has the errors, uh, like I, it, it works. That's what we're mm -hmm. It works fine. But then in the bottom left where it, the exclamation would be the red, uh, it, it has error on every single one. And it says another step outputs my variable uh but has been declared as a different type oh i bet um are we using all string normally we see that error message when like two values have the same name but a different type so say like there's an input to something called um like there's like a decimal there's like there's an in 32 uh input to something and then on change value we change like we output as a decimal like the two types of the two types are different technically, but the names are the same there. Um, Not like for for one, I have it. Yeah, integer thirty two. They're all they're all the same. Or or one one's a string. Uh, like one issue I had it was it was a string, but it was a, okay. it was a string list. And mm -hmm. in the advanced, like when you set the value at uh, in the set value in the advanced, you can set it, and it you can set it as a certain data type, and it goes away. But the but I can't set it as a string list. I can only set it as a string. Right. I think it's. Mm. I, I didn't know if there's any way to, to fix that or not, but I I always get a an error on those. It says it's incompatible. I mean, it works. It work, so it's, I guess it's fine, but I still have to, I, every time I go in there, I have to look at the error thing and I get ignore, but I just want it to, didn't know if there's a way to resolve that issue where it just wouldn't happen anymore. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a um way to resolve it. I think we may we could just I think we could probably put in feature requests to to properly not flag this because this doesn't seem like an error. Like we're taking an object and then we're mapping out an object. Like the object type it's uh, like technically it's not an object type, but the object type is unique where it can be any type, but it's still checking against those types and still throwing that validation. So I think it's like a, it's like a false, um, yeah. like a red herring type of thing, like a false flag. Okay. Yeah, it's like going in as anonymous, so it can be anything you want it to be. Uh, like, right. like in advance, it's, it's any type you want it to be, and then output, it's the same thing. It could be anything, as long as you're put, going in and out the same way, but. I, right, I think we're just falsely like throwing an error there. I think that's, I think that uh, we can probably get, we can probably put like a feature request in for that. Um, yeah, we can uh we can do I can submit it. I can see if we can submit a ticket, just get a feature request in for that in teacher version so we don't get that error message. Okay. Okay. Uh, I did have another question, but I didn't I wanted to let other people go if they need a chance to go to, but I just yeah, had an no unrelated reporting question. Um uh the the question was it so when you're grouping something. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to that the the field that you're grouping? Is there a way to get it not to show up on every line? Um, okay, I think I understand the question. So if you group, let's see, we'll do. It should it. So you see the grouping for every single line. It should only group for like a specific line that you're like doing your grouping on. So I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's grouping, but like uh guest account on number four would just, it, if there is a, let's say guest account had multiple email addresses, it would mm -hmm. say guest account, guest account, guest account. Okay. That's, that's probably because we're interesting. Are you grouping on, um, are you grouping on, what are you grouping on is probably the better question here. Or, or, or maybe, hang on, maybe I'm asking it wrong. I'm, I'm running it now just to see what happens. Oh, oh, I, I, I okay. I guess I'm, I'm asking it wrong. The, I have a custom data type that is, uh, it's a string and a string list. Mm -hmm. 
and the string. So it's like a question and, and it could be multiple answers. Mm -hmm. uh, all the answers are on one line. It's like concatenating it all into one line. Mm -hmm. And when I group the question, it just, I don't, it just repeats the question over again. Hmm. And, and, and it, like the, the answer part, it doesn't separate on multiple lines. It's all on one line. Right. Like just one, like comma separated. Yeah. It's list. just a comma separated lip, uh, like string. And I was like, no, I, I want it to be on separate lines. Okay. So you want every uh, answer to have its own line? Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because, because it's confusing. Well, I, I guess you'd have to be looking at it, but it, but it's confusing. The answers themselves have commas, so it's where where does one answer begin, and the other one start? It doesn't know because it's separating the answers by commas, but in a, within each answer, it has commas. Hmm. I think we'd have to change up how we're doing the reporting or how we're storing that data if we wanted to be separated because it's storing it all into like one. I assume like we have just one field called like answers and it's just a little string list. Yeah, it's just a string list. Yeah. And I, and I assumed that if I would report on it, it would it would know that, OK, this is a list. And, you know, you, you have a question, a single question, which is just a string. And then on that custom user that, that custom type there's another field is a string list of all the different answers that you could have now, i thought it would just you group it by the question list all the answers on separate lines but yeah it does does not do that mm, it might be better to do this with like uh i'm thinking like a um, like two separate reports so one report for just the questions it could be like a smaller report and we have what we call like a selection bus that we can use to refresh another report that would just be a list of the answers. That way you'd make a selection on the report for your question. Then you'd get a list of all the answers for that one question. But I think doing it all together, it's um, it probably won't work that way. Hmm. So like I'm thinking, um, let me see if I can, let me think of a way to build something similar to that. Like we could um, create a page, then we have uh, report viewer, viewer could say Because another part of this to make it even more complicated was that the the end end result would be you have these questions and these answers, which is in order of how they answered it. Mm -hmm. It could be it could be they'd be sent any number of routes and like okay this is how you answered every one of these forty questions like oh I answered that one wrong let's go back to question twenty five and start over from that point. So I guess each one, each line would have to have its own action. Each question would have its own action or each answer would have its own action. To, to be able to go and start over, for, if you're answering 40 questions, mm -hmm. like I answered 25 wrong, let's say, I want to go back to 25 and restart from there so I don't have to restart everything over again. Hmm. It might be better to use... I think the best way to do this maybe are these these answers like multiple choice answers uh some it's again more, it should get more complicated that uh, some are multi-select and some are like radio button single select hmm. so so I, i'm going through i'm creating a list of whether it's a, a list of a single answer due to a radio button or a multi-select list, just a list of all the answers that they selected for one question. So okay. I have, I have, like, I have my my list of questions and answers, but I I don't really have a way to display it in a way that they're they're wanting to see. I bet we could. That would probably want to. We probably want to use like a mixed type repeater for this. Um, let's see. To display it. To display, yeah, it probably want to display it on the form. Like a report wouldn't be able to show different types 
of questions like i assume we're like like the questions or the answers and the questions have like their separate like you said they have their separate types right yeah and i bet we needed like a mix or type repeater on like a on like a form itself to sort of display it instead of using like a report because you want users to you want users to still navigate and select different answers correct like they check something and they say okay that's wrong let me check the right answer well, well, the the request was that. Well, I have I have a repeater now. It goes through each question and how and they it 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 changes the question type and all that stuff, and so they can select properly. But at the very end, when they're all done, they want a list of everything that they answered. So they for for one to go back and review it, and two to store it. So if for some reason they answered correctly, but the actual question was wrong, we could audit what they did and how they did it. Oh, okay. Mm. I know it's getting complicated there, but <laughs> yeah, I, I just started it... like, well, I just want to see the questions and answers. It's all and 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 a and I, I say a list, but in in some nice visual format to say, oh, I can clearly see that this question they answered these answers. Okay. But then yeah, right probably now it's, it's putting it all in one line. And I, I was like, that's not kind of visually friendly because the whole comma problem, like the answers themselves have commas, but then it's separated by commas. So what did they answer really? Yeah, probably, yeah, doing two reports then with like a like a selection run bus filter probably be the best here. You can, um, in this case, I don't have enough data to really demo this properly, but I have something, let's see, no, it's not an entity filter, so I want field filters. Completed by, completed by equals this. This one time editable, get values from other reports. We'll say um, completed by. And then oh, or report ID. Wait, do we want a report ID by that? Or no, I think we do want the report. Yeah, there we go. And then there is a thing is it send yeah, send data is filter change source completed by. And let me get the documentation. Let's see. Yeah, let me find the documentation for that. Give me a second, guys. This is the this is the way I think we should go about it. Um, Like we can filter like what I'm thinking is we have two reports side by side um and what should happen is on selection here or on selection of like your your question you get a list of the answers or you get the answers that were selected for that one and you go down this list and you can select this one get the answers here select this one get the list of answers here uh right now I don't have any assignments here so I can't properly demo this but that's the idea here using um um report selection filters okay. um what i'd like to do is let me make a note to myself i'd like to say i'd like to get like a, a ticket in a support ticket so we can have one of our um support reps walk you through setting this up oh, okay that would be great Support.
And let's see. The And wait, can I get your email just so I can get this ticket submitted? Yep. Okay, thank you. And I think there's also some chat, um, some of the members on the chat um, provided some questions, uh, provide some other options for the um, the set value issue that you're hitting as well, temporarily. Okay, but I'll get the ticket in so uh, we can have someone walk you through that fully and make sure that, uh, and see if that works for you for this. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. And sorry yep. for taking so much time there, but <laughs> thank you. No, you're fine. Anonymous attendee, how to change a title on a confirmation form if outcome options says needs confirmation? Um, I'm assuming, I don't know if this is on an end form or if this is like a validation, but you should be able to change the validation on the form level. Do you Test. Um, so your validations, most of that stuff is controlled, I believe, in older versions is controlled with the validation rules and uh, visibility rules. But in version seven and eight, we're looking at active form flow. So that sort of uh, behavior. Here we go. Triggers no data display. So edit rule. So in active form flows, I believe the data now. I believe it's all under validations now, if I remember correctly. Leave in here. Yep, clear all validations, get import validations. Here, clear validations. Let me find what this is at real quick. Low step category. Nope, not that one. Air handling, nope. Async form rules. Here we go, form rules. So this is where you can set any sort of validation issue. You can select the form control there. And then on the validation, you can control the message there. So there is some confirmation that you have, like as a validation, you can change that um, using the validation, uh, using the set validation steps. And this is all controlled by uh, active form flow. So you can evaluate what determines you know, you can pull in this form, you can set the form control, then you can build rules and logic to say, okay, well, this value here is this, then throw this validation. Uh, let's see. From Daryl Robertson, how to easily delete rows from a form without deleting a row? Uh, let's see. Let me look at this real quick. Are you spec uh, specifying like these rows here or just the items within the rows, uh, Daryl? Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't see that part. Add button in. And so for the add button here, let me add it real quick. Sorry, jumping over the place. Um, anonymous added for the add button and on button settings and behavior check. Needs confirmation. Oh, this setting. Okay, so this is from looking look looks like this is need confirmation. You mean specifically on this? You can change the confirmation here. Confirmation from data, data name, 
yes button text from data name, no button takes. Do you mean this confirmation title? How do I change the title on that confirmation or? Because I don't think there's a way to, oh, on pop-up, okay. Let's take a look real quick. So on pop-up, Okay, so you're saying this uh, this uh, submit form pop up uh, confirmation? Okay. Hmm. Let's test this out, see if this works. To be honest, I've never used this component, so I'm not sure, but we can try this and see what else works here. Nope, that actually pulls in. Oh, yeah, actually. Test confirmation. And then they just pull in. Okay. The submit form portion, then. Now that's just getting data name, custom. Hmm. Let me I honestly don't know if there's a way to do this currently. Let me. Let's see. Let me run that again real quick, get some opinions here, but I don't think, I currently don't think we have a way of controlling this unless, see. Where is it? I don't know if we can. No, we can't even hide it from here. I'll get some opinions here. So we can hide the parent form. We can hide that sub title bar. Seating form size. View override validation settings now.
I'll look into that and let's see. And we may need to get a ticket in to look into that, but currently I don't think that is possible right now. Just from what I've looked at so far, I don't think it's possible right now. Uh, let's see. I don't want to stay on this too long. Uh, go back to Daryl's question. Rose, before you add a label. Uh, Daryl, if you want to come off mute, if possible, can give us a little bit more context here. Um, yes. So can you guys hear me? Yes. So I have an active form already um, that's been developed and just, you know, there's labels in a lot of the roles, but then there's empty roles in between where I want to get rid of the space. So I know oh, okay. you should go over right click and delete one of these, but mm -hmm. What I'm struggling with is knowing which one to delete, because if you hit delete there, you delete the whole form. Right. And really, I just want to delete a row because it's extra rows in there that I don't need. And so the, the uh, textbook said go and delete them over here where the, the rows are, the 30s, using the right. ellipses. But how do you know which one is the one you need to delete? What <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a... There's not a good way to tell this right now. I wonder if we have a, let me see, is there a setting to behavior view? Hmm. There's not a good, yeah, there's not a good way to do that, to be honest. Other than, like you said, just going through the rows and then adding and just sort of guessworking here. I'd okay. say this is a good idea for a future request. Um, Daryl, can I get your email address? I can submit a ticket in, and then we could put a future request to get that, see so if we can get that added to the product. Okay. Yeah, I could chat it to you. Yeah. That okay. way, once we have you on the ticket and we set that up, you should get a notification when that's added to the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's what I've been doing. I've been guessing and delete the wrong one, and then you got to undo and try next one. And so I was just wondering if there was an easier way. I got an extra letter in there. Oh. That's it. Okay. Thank you. I'll get this ticket submitted. Um, you should get a notification once it's been submitted. Probably just have someone uh, just submit the feature request for this one. Okay. Can I? Can I? If no one has, can ask another form question if it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, so say in that case, I'm updating a form, I'm adding some additional labels, um, mm -hmm. but it seems like the label has a predefined, has predefined text from mm -hmm. data. Um, and so I'm new into manipulating forms and I don't know where to do that. So if you just imagine like you would add a label here and call it label one. Mm -hmm. And then right beside it, you would have another label, mm -hmm. but it looks like it comes from predefined text or a predefined term. And so on this form that was created, it looks like mm -hmm. there were some predefined terms. There's a list, and I just want to know how to add to that list of predefined terms so that looks like I'm able to select it. Hope that makes sense, what I'm saying. Okay, I think I got up to the point you have a list. So you have a list that's going to a form and then you want to display that list of data? Well, it's um, it's a looks like it's a list and it's listed as pre, um, pre So let me show you on this side. So if you put label um, and then it looks like you have an option to select uh, oh, you mean from like data, pick from, pick from okay. data. I get what you're saying. Okay, so... Um, Normally get the pick from data if you're using like a data flow or you can just, you know, uh, set up some input data here. And then this is what you're looking for, correct? Yes, yes. So I'm looking at a screen just like that, except mm -hmm. there's a list of items already in there, predefined terms already there. And I just mm -hmm. don't know where that list is housed. 
Um, depends on, I guess it depends on where that data is from. Um, if it's created, sometimes um, if you look at the top of your form, if it is input data, you'll see it there as like given inputs. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, I don't think we... Yeah, mine still says set up input data, so I don't know. Okay, if so, it's it, so it's most likely not coming from there. Mm-hmm. I would check um, if you go, if you like click on like the gray space and go to um, for your properties, I would check either for active form flows or if you go into legacy, I would check for data flows here. My guess is one of these is outputting that data that you can then select it from. Active form flows from, all right, active form flows. There's forms there, but not active form flows data. That is empty. And it okay. was the second place that you were saying? Uh, data flows here. So data. there's, there's if there's something in active form flows, you should be able to uh, like just click the pencil here and then you can, uh, in theory, see the data uh, if there's data being outputted. Okay. Calculate, kind of calculate premium. So update the about list information. Okay. And then the other place was under legacy. I just want to check both places. Yep. yep. There it is. It was under legacy, predefined terms and legacy. That's where it was at. All right. And ooh, now. This is my first time seeing it, so I'll have to do some digging on how to actually update this. But um, I do see predefined terms from legacy. This looks like it was loaded from somewhere. These are one of those forms mm-hmm. where for, for my company it was uh, pre-designed mm-hmm. by an architect. So I just need to mm-hmm. dig into where they designed it at and then yeah. Yeah, update and, it. yeah, you can uh you should be able to edit that data flow. And if it is being fetched in there, you should be able to see um, where that data is there. Mm, you know what? There's an array predefined. Outputs. Where is the input coming from? <laughs> okay, I, I'll do some digging into it. Yeah, that, I do see it. So I just need to figure out. Um, where did I actually figure out where it was defined at? But I do see, looks like it's coming from somewhere. I just need to figure out where in a flow. Um, we we just joined on to a uh, decision. So I'm still new to the system. So you can you yeah, can yeah. go to another question, definitely. <laughs> I think that's the only other question right now. That's the only one I see right now. Uh, does anyone else have any questions right now? Dear, if you have any other questions about uh, flows or decisions, you can uh, feel free to ask them because it doesn't look like anyone else has questions right now. Uh, no new questions. I just got to just this is my thing now is sort of um, being able to add to the list of predefined terms. But yeah, you do, it does look like it's being fetched from a flow. I just need to figure out how to edit it. Use different times to the structure. Okay. If no one else has any questions, then I think we are good to end our session today. Um, I have notes for people I'll be putting in DTs in for and tickets for. Um, if anyone would like to, you know, look through this and review, uh, this should be getting uh, published onto our YouTube channel. Um, I think it gets published same day. I can't really confirm that. If not same day, it should be up there tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we don't have lunch and learn, so, um, you guys are free to go unless anyone has any questions. Otherwise you guys have a, uh, first happy good Friday, anyone taking day off and happy Easter, anyone that, you know, celebrates it. Everyone have a good day.